because you've only got a couple things available to you. But for reading data, that's all you need, right? Absolutely. Read, write, uh, easy. It's very, very simple. And you see, like we mentioned before, the very beginning, we talked about authenticating with the service provider. So that could be anything like OAuth or Google Auth Authentication, Facebook, even some of Microsoft's own services. So this way we can say, well, maybe we want the, the user to actually sign into one of these services first, and then we can verify if they actually are who they really are and add that to their profile. Very cool. So that really covers a lot of what we had here. Um, again, you can feel free to take a look at some of the source code we have. Let's go around the home stretch. Now we've taken a look at all the technical nitty gritty. So we've walked you through the code, gone through the leaderboards, several of the functions, insert, delete, and update. Finally, we verified through the Azure portal, which you saw before. We added Adam with his fine score of 300. Yes. We pulled him into the leaderboard itself. But now we have uh, Prime 31. What other options exist? Well, I quickly browsed through the internet fast, and I saw there uh, another option was Bitrave. Um, it requires newtonsoft.json. So this might be a, a bit of a downfall for some people because that's a premium plugin for Unity. So Bitrave is free, and it does much of the same thing that um, Prime 31's plugin does but you'll need to download this um, $20 or $30 asset from the Unity store. And essentially what it allows you to do is serialize and parse uh, JSON through a RESTful interface. This runs across more platforms, uh, but again, a lot of the functions work identical to what we have here. If you visit my site in the near future, you can also see that I have a uh, tutorial coming in for that as well. Again, our goal is to get uh, developers using Azure and understanding how to write leaderboards and really take advantage of everything both Microsoft and Unity has to offer. It's pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said before, JSON.NET plugin, $20. You can get it from the Unity store itself and build it into your project. So coming around the home stretch, what are Azure Mobile Services? Can you give us some fine examples of how you think you could use some mobile services? Leaderboards, mm. user storage, user data storage on there, mm. uh, multi-platform data storage. So you're saying if I, I could really keep a lot of the same save information on perhaps Windows 8, and then how else could I use that? All my player settings across all the devices uh, that I want to deploy to. So I want to store the user's profile information, right. their name, whatever other information I'm collecting, uh, not just high scores, but okay. all sorts of other information. Maybe I want to store gameplay statistics, and I want to, uh, I'm not using another analytics service, I could store all that data myself up there. So you can actually do all of your own little analytics, user storage, user profile, Anything you can store data for. Not a bad idea. Or maybe if you, your developer works on multiple games, you could say something like, well, I see you've already played uh, games A, B, and C. Um, in that regard, why don't we give you games uh, D, E, and F for free, or perhaps at a discounted rate? So their own back end, they could say, you've already logged in through um, OAuth in this way. I can verify you are who you say you are. You have several of our games, so I'll throw you a bone. Here's one or two for free for you. Very cool. Um, again, we can create an uh, Azure mobile service, both through uh, the dashboard itself that you just saw in Internet Explorer, um, or Visual Studio has its own tools built in through the Azure SDK. Uh, again, no time to get into that, but feel free to look at it on your own. Uh, compiling our project, we uh, want to understand how the DLLs work. So again, very quickly, uh, Unity will look at the plugins folder for any DLLs it has in there. Then as you're building for a specific platform, it's going to look for, say, Metro or WP8 for Windows Phone 8. Those are essentially uh, preprocessor directives that Unity has built in already. If I'm going for Windows Phone, it'll look just for those plugins and build Azure for that platform or DLLs for that platform. Again, if you're looking for other options in the future, Bitray Vovos exists as well, but again, that requires a $20 um, additional plugin. This source code and more, and more is all available on um, github.com. So feel free to look for me on GitHub. Um, ask any questions you'd like there. So I have uh, many detailed tutorials along with uh, about five or six times as many slides as we have here. Nice. Step-by-step so -step instructions. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. But uh, I'm confident that uh, you'll have no problem getting started as well. So thank you again for joining me today, Adam. Thank you. That was a wonderful session. And join us next for our final session of the day, adding the finishing touches. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome back. Our last module of the day of developing 2D and 3D games with Unity for Windows. 
I think this has been awesome. I, I've had a great time. I this has been amazing. Back. I know I've said it over and over and over again. I'm so happy about yeah. this. I think this has turned out well. Hopefully, you've gotten a lot of good information from this. But I do want to point out that the uh, folks watching this live right now, hang on for a little bit at the end of the session after we say goodbye. I've uh, got some directions for a couple little random drawing that we're going to do for a few of the folks that are joining us today. So just hang tight at the end. And let's get rolling on adding the finishing touches, module 10, the last one of the day. Beautiful. All right. Home stretch. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. <laughs> we're going to go meta, talk about what we're going to talk about. In our module overview here, we've got live tiles, integrating a privacy policy, a pause screen for your application, and in-app purchases. And we're going to do this all in zombie, pumpkin, slayer. Yeah. <laughs> I had to make sure that was working there. Very nice. These guys in the back are awesome. <laughs> yeah. <Woo. laughs> so, live tiles. Okay. Very cool way for folks to integrate additional pop into the application. Okay. Yeah, the idea behind this module is there's things that you want to do in your game to differentiate it from the rest of the games. Right. Um, leaderboards. Your session. Right, in fact, I tried to do le leaderboards during the break. I thought it would be really cool to get them integrated yeah. in ZPS during the, uh, the break here. And we almost got it. We got we it up and running. Got up and running, got it actually querying Azure. I just didn't have enough time to do the GUI elements to list all the names in there. But it was, yeah. it was close. And we yeah. only had about a 15-minute you know, break. Yeah. So live tiles, they give the user extra info. A great example of this, let me show my start screen on these computers here. Very nice. I like that. See I like the, the little pop keys, going yeah. on here? Live tiles, they, one, they kind of catch the user's eye. Two, they give relevant information without always having to go into the application. So in news and weather, stocks, three things that I use it for all the time. So what we can do, being that we're doing gaming here, mm -hmm. is talk about ways that a game could maybe have you come back easier to the game. You want okay. to entice people to come back to the game. Right. So cut the rope, for example. That does a really neat way of doing it. They show you how many stars you've got. It's kind of an enticing way to come oh. back. So how do you use a live tile? What is a live tile? We saw that they flipped. Are you limited to the size of them? Right. There are many, 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 many different tile templates that you can use. It looks like it's displaying information of some sort, but I guess it doesn't always have to do that. It can be just a simple message. It could be an image. It can be a gallery of images. Like on here, I show an example for Windows, a bunch of image tile format. This is tile-wide 310 by 150 image collection. So this is actually the template name that you would use if you wanted to do this. Okay. And you can do this in games. You can do this in C-sharp XAML applications. You can do this you know, desktop or uh, uh, Windows Store applications, Windows Phone applications as well. Yep. On the C-sharp side, outside of the gaming side, you can do this. Um, if I go to a browser here, Tile template catalog, Windows 8. Let's search for that. This shows you, this is a list. Let me increase the size here. This is a list of all the different tile templates. And you can use all of these in your application, any one of these. You just have to use these names. And we'll look at how you use those names. A lot of diversity there. A lot of diversity to show you. Here's on Windows. Here's if you want to do it on Windows Phone. Okay. So many different formats if you want to do wide or with text on it. Yeah, and actually, I like that it looks very similar on both platforms as well. Yes, I like where the convergence of the platform yes. API is going. So very cool ways, right? You can see that you have a ton of potentials here, really however you want to display it. Uh, whether you want to do text or image and text or multiple images, you have a variety of ways and sizes that you can do this. Now, with tiles, you can include them as local tiles in your application. Mm -hmm. In other words, they can be something included in your project or they can be a remote tile. So you can Ooh. actually point somewhere on the net, yeah. and your application can pull that down from that location and set that as a tile. So maybe if I want to send people updates or things, uh, perhaps seasonal information um, later on, I don't have to actually rebuild and republish my entire app? Correct, correct. So you can use something on the net, point them to an image out on the net. Uh, Prime 31, actually, when you download, because um, we're going to be using Prime 31 here today, when you download it and install it, they have actually an example of pulling a remote tile down from the net. Beautiful. Very cool. So you could write a service around that, maybe a website or an Azure, mob Azure mobile service, and uh, use the data and services, server-side services, to bring back data. Really cool things that you could do there. I like it. All right, so for this, we're going to be using one of the plugins from Prime 31. This is the Microsoft Essentials plugin. Of course, you want to go to prime31.com, and you want to install the package into your project. In other words, you double-click on the package that you download from their website. 
Uh, early on when we talked about architecture, the first module went over what packages are. And they're just simply a way that you can redistribute stuff uh, that you can use across your projects. Okay. So the Prime 31 plugins come down as a .unily package file. Double click on it, it goes into your project. Now last session you were showing that with Azure, you had to add the P31 Metro Azure DLL. Yes, correct. To unprocessed DLLs. Okay. So in this case, it's slightly different. We need to do this one as well, P31 Metro Essentials DLL. And we'll look at that inside of Unity to what that looks like. And Ensure you have Windows Store selected as what you're building to. This does not run in the editor. This is meant for when you do your actual build because this calls into a platform-specific API. Correct. And I add a little tech note here just for the folks that like to really understand how things are happening because uh, Unity will generate your Visual Studio project as Jason was showing yesterday. Mm -hmm. It doesn't overwrite that project. So if you happen to have your project already generated, your Visual Studio project, okay. and then you decide later on to install Prime 31 in, well, that project needs references to those libraries. Right. So either you can do a comparison between a new generated project and an old one, and you can see where your C-sharp project differs, Yeah. update the post-build step, add the reference manually. You can, I've done it before manually. All right. uh, or you can just, if you don't have anything custom in your project, you can just delete the build that Unity creates for you and just have it regenerated again. So that's so why I have a little note. Cat, many ways to do it. Some folks like it, the technical information. So I just want to add a little note on there for it. All right. What do you say we do a demo of this? I'd love to see this. OK. So first, let us do this. I'm going to turn this off so we don't really get a full preview of what's going to happen here. OK. Even though I know you just saw it. <laughs> Very vibrant dashboard. I like it. And we can see what I was doing during the break here. We're trying to get the leaderboard integrated here. So actually, this window is going to look a little funny when we do our build because we are concentrating on getting this as opposed to the size of this. Yeah. So we'll notice when we finally export, we're going to get a little extra um, blue probably on the background. The title screen will need a little fixing, but that's okay. We'll talk about it now and you'll know what's going on. So in here, I've downloaded and installed that Prime 31 uh, project in here. And as you were mentioning in your session, mm -hmm. We get things that show up in plugins, Metro. Okay, looks like platform specific folders. Metro Essentials, Metro Store. So we're gonna talk about the Metro Store shortly. For Metro Essentials, we can just simply double click on test out a scene here. But I've got this code brought into my application. Okay. So let us load this up over here. And let me find, we're gonna check out a couple things here. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got this that we're going to look at in one moment. Right. Again, platform-specific code. Hence platform-specific code. Your processor directed. That's right. right and I'm going to load up my build settings here. Control Shift B for the hotkey fanatics. Yeah. Windows Store is my player now. One thing that got me when I first started Unity is everything defaults in a project to being a PC standalone build. Okay. Uh, if you need to make it a any other platform, you actually need to highlight that platform and click Switch Platform. Ah, Otherwise, you you're just not click, actually. But don't switch. You just click, it doesn't do it. You've got to actually ah. switch platform and it re encodes and processes and does a bunch of stuff on the back end. Ah. Now, if we look under the player settings, you were talking about that last session here, yes. and Jason was talking about that too. This gives you your platform specific settings. Right. And so, what I did, what I did here, a couple things. So, a wide tile is 310 by 150. Okay. So, when you deploy your application by default, it doesn't have a wide tile with it. Not everybody uses wide tile. Right. Um, so, for example, if I look at Unity here, I don't have a wide, wide tile for it. Yeah. But Zombie Pumpkin Slayer, pause for effect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> zombie Pumpkin Slayer uh, does have this. <laughs> that game, ZPS, <laughs> does have this here. Uh, this is the wide tile. So, Matt created this. Yes. This is simply a 310 by 150. Um, image. Yeah. So I set that here because that will get pushed out to my Visual Studio solution. Right. So that'll be there by default. That now that's not a live tile. That's right. just my wide tile. So it's just a, an image essentially at that point. It is nothing more than an image. In fact, if I come over here and I look, that's my image right there. That okay. is my that is my wide tile right there. Ah. Well, something I want to point out real quick. I found it saved quite a bit of time. Is if you look for the Microsoft Web App Template at their GitHub they actually have a tool you can use that'll automate this. So you can pass in one image, it'll then center and process everything as a web worker in the background. You just drop in an image, 
and I'll spit out um, resulting image sizes very quickly in a zip file for all of those. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this way, all that done in about one fell swoop, 10 seconds. That's better than, uh, I did one a couple, actually about a year ago, which will only do the main ones for a project where you drag and drop an image onto mm -hmm. it, it generates it, and uh, but doesn't do all of them. So. Saved me quite a bit of time.